What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Back here uh, in my studio. Quarantine hair has grown out a little bit. But you know, I want to, I want to make another video. I want to get back into it a little bit. I've been slacking for the last couple weeks. Anyways, today I really wanted to look into uh, vector fields in Grasshopper. Um, it's sort of showing the possibilities of what they can do. And I'm going to break that down into like trying to explain what vector fields are. One, two, constructing a vector field with like a variety of points in two dimensions and maybe extracting some uh, field lines and whatnot that people use for common diagrams. And then three, creating a three dimensional vector field. Let's get into it. Okay, so here we are in um, Grasshopper. Right away, basically all that you need for your vector, for a vector field is all within the vector field um, component list. You're gonna see that you're gonna have a bunch of charges and forces which will influence the vectors. You're gonna have sort of how to, uh, to blend these different forces together. Then you're gonna have a way of evaluating the, that field. And then you're going to have a way of displaying all those different fields. So, so these four categories within the vector field line are basically all you need. Anyways, um, let's, let's get into it. So I first just want to show you what different types of charges you can lay down. So we're going to, we can have a line charge, which we'll use a line input. We're going to have a point charge. We can have a spin force, which will give you uh, a very uh, a rotational um, force. And we will have, and for right now, we're just going to ignore the vector force. It's somewhat similar to line um, charge. Somewhat. Um, okay, anyways, so all of these require an input, which here, let me space this out a little bit. Um, so let's just start out. I'm just going to start out with actually the point charge because it's the simplest. So what this does is it's going to require a, uh, first I'm actually going to create a, a field to evaluate within. So I'm just going to create a, a rectangle or a square. Depends on how you see it. Let's change actually that color. That is pretty hard to see. Okay. Um, my glasses aren't helping, but you know what it is. Um, anyway, so this, so I'll be trying to evaluate within this field. And I'll show you how to create the points. That'll be sort of the surface that'll constrain all those um, vectors. So, okay, so a point charge, what it is gonna need is it's gonna need the location, the direction, so the point whether it repels or attracts um, vectors, and then the decay, so how, how large it, of its radius of influence will be, and then also the bounds for, um, which we could constrain with that, but for now it's okay. It's okay. So let's just drop a point into, um, into Rhino and let's actually, let's assign, so then let's create a point, uh, a point container. Oh, geez, I can't see anything. Um, that's all right. Right click, set a point and let's, let's bring that in. Okay, so now we have a point chart, which we can see here represented by those four arrows. Actually, right, I am going to um, create this field so we can just one by one add these components to, uh, I just need to array a series of points within this thing. So it, probably one of the easiest ways to do that is just to do, um, just to use a grid structure. There's a million ways you could do it. You could use mesh, uh, meshes to get the vertices. You can just scatter points in there. There's a million things you can put in this, but from for now, um, I'm just going to use this and then take the nodes to be the points of, to influence the vectors. Anyway, so now we have a 10 by 10 grid. I'm actually just going to shrink that a little bit. Let's get a little bit more dense, but without increasing the computing power. I'm going to hide these guys for now. So we just start out with one. So what we're going to do is with this point charge, we need, so now we have one force. So we've selected one of these. So now we need to use, um, this merge fields to actually, well, we don't really need that, but we will use that later to have actually, um, uh, to actually visualize the vector forces. So, so this will go into the merge fields. And as we add more charges and whatnot here, we're going to be continually adding into this merge fields to create one 
general field that we'll be then evaluating. So then, then you use the field lines, which is probably the best way to visualize. I'll show you the other methods of visualizing. So what this is gonna require is obviously the field, but vectors need points to derive from. They can't just be, um, well, they can't, they'll always default to the zero. So we actually need to define points that, that will, um, so they can live somewhere. Um, and then once again, this will just take the number of samples here, which we will just leave at a thousand just to keep that um, simple. Of all these things can be manipulated, but accuracy, not really interested in playing with that, not really interested in that. Anyway, so now, so now we have a very, the most fundamental, we have a force and we have a line. And what we'll do is you can see how this, this point will af affect that entire, um, here, let's just go on top view for now. You can see how this point will affect uh, the entire vector field. And what I'll show you now is, so this is taking out a, um, so right now this is repelling. So one is actually repel, is actually repelling. And if you, based on intuition, a negative one will attract. So what one thing that I really like to do, rather than continually um, inputting negative one or one, is I like to just go in here and give and bring in a, um, a value list. And then if you double click on this, you can edit it. So we'll say one is repel and then attract. equals to negative one. So now you can see as we're repelling with this, and if you go down here to attract, we're attracting. So this is just a very nice way of um, later when you, for example, if you have multiple of these point charges, which we can just do right now. So I'm just gonna hold down all to drag another one. So now we have a second point charge and I'm going to control C, control V, duplicate this. Uh, clear value, set one point, select it. So now we have another point. And then I'm going to hold down shift to add this to the merge fields. And as you can see now, we have a second um, point. And it'll be easy to say, okay, so actually I want this one to attract while the other repels. And you can immediately start to see um, results. Let me hide this grid. Type in grid, then H to turn off the grid. Okay, so now we can see the point charges. So let's um, let's add in a line charge for um, for a little bit of fun. So I'm just going to draw a curve. So now we have a curve. We can put it here. Right click, assign one curve, bring it in here. And what we're going to have again is we're going to have the charge. So negative one or one. So I'm just going to control C, control V when another one of these. Um, toggles and what does this be optional bounce we can just ignore that for now because i don't really care um and then drag a shift in and what you can see is is it brought in that that third force right now it's repelling or we can attract and so what you can see right now is that you can get absolutely wild um results almost instantaneously. I'm doing with this sort of, here, let's let's bump up the amount of, um, the amount of points we're gonna receive, just to get it, to make it a little sexier. So it's looking really sexy already. You can already see how, how powerful this is gonna be. Um, but one of my, we still haven't even added in my favorite um, charge, which is that uh, spinning char um, charge. So let me bring in one more point. Let's get, let's get this thing pretty complex. Um, point, right click, set one point. Oh, I hate that. There it is. And then this guy. He's not doing anything now because obviously he's not plugged in. Um, here, let's actually, let's visualize this one. So you can see is that it's actually gonna, Grasshopper is going to show you a visualization of the diameter and the size of, or well, okay, that's the same thing. Um, but the direction of that, the spinning force is gonna um, go. So we can actually bring in this. And, and so we can see that this is rotating uh, 
counterclockwise. So let's double click on this. So now let's say, right now it's attract, so this is counterclockwise. Counterclockwise, and this is clockwise. So right now we have it at counterclockwise and we can toggle that to be clockwise. And you can see how, so now if I hold shift down and bring in this other force, plug it in there, we can see how that's gonna affect going clockwise and counterclockwise. And then, and then of course we have the, um, the radius, which we can, here I'll just show you what's right now. It's set to five. Let's see what seven will. So essentially there's unlimited possibilities within this field. And you could, I mean, immediately export this as a diagram, right? If you just do custom preview, let's just bring out some line weights, blah, blah, blah. Um, bring in a swatch. By the way, this is from, uh, this is Lunchbox. Um, I don't know, sorry, Human UI by Andrew Human. Uh, these are these components. This just says preview components. And you can see how, how nice this can be and you can increase density and whatnot. Anyways, so that's, so that's sort of like the fundamental different forces we will see in here. So that's sort of surveying these. Um, just a quick look at this. So we've used this merge field already, the break field. So what you can see coming out of this merge field is it's coming out as one list, one field. And what this will do to the break field. So if I just bring all these up to the break field and I show you what it's, it's actually going to create individual lists for each different force. But obviously we don't want that at this moment. We want one unified field. So I'm just gonna ignore that for now. Um, another, another interesting thing is these um, different displays that we can use. So for example, so for example, we can, um, here, let's, let's, just, let's just bring down a couple of these displays. The perpendicular display doesn't ever help me. So I'm just gonna go with these ones. These three. Um, so what year? Once again, this is going to need a field. So I'm going to bring in the field. It's going to need a rec rectangular bounding. So I'm going to just bring in this curve as a rectangular bounds. And then the samples, which we can just leave at a thousand. And you can tie that, for example, to the amount of samples you bring here. Which actually, wait, let me show you. So let me, so it's default set to a thousand. What does it look like if it's five hundred? Here, let me turn this off. As it creates longer samples, it, it extends the curve of these field lines. Um, it does not correspond to the length of these field lines. If I was to measure out these polyline curves, um, they would not at any rate relate to this, uh, this amount of steps. So I would ignore that for length, but, um, but you could also tie that into, the, into this guy, which here, let's bring this back. And you can see as you lower the samples, the, the amount of force and the influence of those field lines is directly affected. And what this is outputting is a mesh because it has color assigned to the vertices. So you can actually bake out this mesh and use it for whatever you want. Um, all of these will give out a mesh. Anyways, let's wait, let's let's try the second one. I'm gonna delete the sample thing and Oh yeah, the curve. I'll turn this guy off. And this one, I think I personally think this one is so much more useful. The multicolored, it doesn't seem to have. I, I I get it, but it's hard to completely understand what is going on because often on opposite sides, for example, this line there was purple on one side and green on the other. And it's a little bit more confusing. This one definitely is more um, intuitive about where where the forces are coming are influencing and as you change for example this radius you that'll affect 
that that um, the color of those vertices in that area. So this one's definitely a lot more useful, and this one is probably the most useful if you don't want to use if you're not going to end up using field lines, which can be a little computationally heavy. You can um, just use this. Um, Bring this guy in. Turn this one off. And let's just turn off all of these. And this is like the this is the very um, typical vector drawing where you have a normalized vector um, just showing at each one of the points where it is flowing and how um, and how those forces are influencing it. Anyways, so as to now, we've all we've been um, we've been looking at this in two dimensionals, two dimensions. So I just want to show you how this has the properties to be able to use in three D. So I'm going to just delete these guys. Let's bring back this one. So as you can see, it's a two dimensional thing, but there is no reason why it has to maintain stay a two dimensional object. You can see we can start bringing this into 3D. And then let's amp up that radius of this guy just so maybe it'll actually attract them. And then what I'm going to do is actually, um, I'm just going to do a linear array of these guys. Let's just do it in the, in the Z direction and let's do let's do 40. Now this might get a little heavy. So let me, uh, I just need to make sure that this is not gonna freeze. This may freeze. Um, so as you can see here, all right, let's turn on these guys. And, And then actually let's lower the samples so each line is much shorter and not so. Anyways, I mean, these, the possibilities you can do within this, just using these simple components all within this little, this little uh, section of vectors I mean, this is essentially um, unlimited the possibilities you can do. Um, I would highly recommend really experimenting with this and thinking of what you can do. I'm going to make a second video where I actually bring this in and to form geometries with these vector fields. But I think that's now that's good enough for uh, the first video. Anyways, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And yeah, tell me if you um, enjoy and what else you'd like to see. Peace.